What's up, YouTube? How y'all doing today? Uh, thanks for coming by the channel. Today we're going to talk about some undervolting on the Radeon RX 5700 XT from MSI Gaming X. Pretty big card. Uh, and then we're going to go over some of the things I did to the case recently, just to make it look pretty, you know. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So now we're going to go into undervolting the 5700 XT. So you right click, you go into the Radeon software. It's pretty easy to get to. Uh, I start under system usually to check my version number, my drivers. Sometimes the drivers will cause your undervolt to crash and stuff like that. So don't, don't do the betas. Always do the WQHLs, the qualified ones. Under per performance, you click tuning, turn off the automatic and do manual. Uh, there's several settings in here that you won't have to worry about if you're just undervolting. I attempted to overclock several times and I couldn't really get it to stay. So I do do the pers the manual fan profile to up to 50% around 62 degrees, 62 to 65. And then I do a slow curve from the minimum usually. Uh, there is VRAM tuning if you want to try and overclock your VRAM. I don't use that. I don't do the power tuning. It is set to an increased percentage, but I just I just disable it because it just makes it run hotter for no actual gain. Uh, the best performance improvement is usually from undervolting with a, a slight overclock. It's weird with Radeon cards. Uh, so, so you go down here and you open up the fine tuning and change it. Default is 1200 millivolts and then I always go below 1100 you set it to whatever you want uh there are some cards that will go below a thousand millivolts so if you can get it that low that's awesome because there's like no heat coming off your card if that's the case so i undervolt you apply changes and then i use unigen heaven to run to see how stable it is and all that as well as running the games whichever games you play mostly with your card you want to run it in that so so I open up Unigen Heaven, and then I run max settings on 1080p. Uh, I did get a 1440p monitor, so I, I ran it in 1440p a couple times. So I did have a crash, so I go back into the settings, adjust my millivolts, and then apply the changes that way. So once, once you find the stable undervolt, and if you decide to overclock the stable overclock by running whatever benchmark tools you want to use. Um, you set it that way and just forget it. Now you can do this in MSI Afterburner, but I found that using MSI Afterburner actually causes a lot of problems for me uh, because it's installed with Radeon software and they don't work very nicely together. So, so after running for a little while, you, you want to check your temps. I use the hardware info and that works pretty good. So you can see your GPU, your CPU temps and all that. So as you can see in these results, we had a current running temperature as I left the benchmark running. It was about 54 degrees. Uh, that's because the window minimized, but it had peaked out at 62. The junction temp was 74. And then our hotspot temp over several hours of running was only 85 degrees. So like you, you're usually just gonna watch the junction and the GPU temperature. And the actual junction temp and GPU temp are the ones that are calculated with the boost clocks and all that stuff. So as you can see, we averaged, not averaged, we only had 800 average, but uh, 1,988 was the maximum boost clock as well and was what we're currently running in the background. I didn't change the memory clock. I didn't change anything other than the voltage. And you can see the voltage up under GPU core voltage VDDC. Uh, it's 1.081 is what we ran maximum and then uh, currently. 
So it drew a little bit more power than the the one ten seventy five I set, which is okay. It's it's not a big deal. Uh, it's still less than twelve hundred. It's still left at less than eleven hundred. So it generates much less heat, and then overall will exp extend the life of your car. So solid. And just for giggles, I ran Breakpoint Ghost Recon. That's a Tom Clancy, Con Tom Clancy game. I did 1080p Ultra. Uh, this is the result. Score A, 182 maximum, 60 minimum. It only peaked at 73 degrees on the benchmark. It averaged about 70 degrees on the GPU. Uh, the usage wasn't too high, honestly. And then in the 1440p results, you'll see that as well. They, they weren't too high. Uh, it, I don't even think it used all of the GPU, but... We did set Fidelity FX sharpening, which is a Radeon exclusive feature in both 1080p and 1440p. Uh, it did cause the any benchmarks I ran for a while to crash, so I turned it off. I don't really need the feature, so some features will cause it to crash. And this is also Ultra on 1440p. So we did max out at 98%, but average 97 it dipped down quite a lot to 85-ish. 71C Max was cooler while running higher settings, 1440p and all that, so kind of nutty. But yeah, the under undervolt worked great. Really, really fun to do too. So I also decided to paint some little ridges on there just to add some effects. And I did that to pretty much all of the Arctic fans that you can see. Uh, the ones that you can't see the little fins on, I didn't paint those. But it's just an accent, you know, makes it look pretty cool. Add some functionality to the look, black and white built. So make it look pretty. I gotta look at it every day, so why not? Here we're adding some air goo RGB light strips. Uh, I don't have ARGB on the MSI B450i Gaming Plus AC. It's just RGB, four pin. If I had three three pin, it would work better. But we're just going with white, so it doesn't matter. I did try and download the Dragon software, Dragon Center software for MSI. It's garbage. <laughs> it's garbage. Uh, it's the only way I can change the graphics card color. But I'm not. I'm just letting it run RGB. I had it all white, and then the software is just buggy. Uh, Mystic Light works pretty good, though, for managing these light strips. They are magnetic, and the magnets are actually pretty strong. I was surprised at how strong they are. So you get two light strips. I think I paid 16 bucks for both of them. Link's in the description if you want to check them out. I like the way they feel. They're, they're very rubbery, rubber textured, almost like a silicone molder on the outside, but it holds all the lights in really good. They also give you these two cable extensions to go with it. So you can run them all the way around your case. Uh, you can buy more. You can daisy chain them if you'd like to. My motherboard actually has two RGB headers on it. So I'll be hooking up to one of those. Let's get this in focus. 
There you go. Now you can see the plug. And then here's the four pin. So in addition, I also painted a couple other fractal design features that came with the case. This is the pump mounting plate. And instead of mounting a pump, I decided to use it as decoration. I later actually, once I colored in the letters, I went and outlined the outside of that weird shape around the pump, just a lip on it. So you'll see that later on too. But coloring this was pretty cool. Uh, it was easy to get into the grooves and, you know, with a acrylic paint pen, if I really wanted to change it, it would probably come off because most of this is powder coated. Yeah, I could probably just easily scrape it off. The camera likes my head. <laughs> oh, well. All right, so what I did today was, you saw me paint the fan. I put the fan back on. So the, the fan's got a little spiral in it. Sorry about the cord if it gets in the way. So it's a little spiral. I highlighted it with white. We also additionally painted the fractal design on the fan. That looks good. And I put in the LED lights. So we got a strip up here, got an extension cable, and then down here at the bottom there's a strip, but you can't see that. Anyway. So there's one up top, one up at the bottom. So we're gonna turn it all on, see how it looks. Uh, I also wanted to show you how I mounted this, how I mounted the fan at the bottom, right here at this angle. Because for this graphics card, the 5700 XT Gaming X from MSI, so it's a RX 5700 XT, it's a two and a half slot, slot card. And I mounted this and it's actually resting directly on top of the fan. So this fan is it's low RPM. It's the same as a case fan speed. Uh, so it's pushing air into the GPU because I do have a little bit of blockage here. So we're just adding some extra air to it. Works really good. And I'll show you the bracket in there in a second. Okay? Okay, so you can see this bracket right here, right back here. That bracket right there is just a Home Depot bracket this is actually a hurricane brace. Uh, it's got the four screw holes. I think it's like $2 or something like that. So all I did was use a $2 brace. You can see the 90 degree thing. I think that's like 10 cents or something. And then I just used a fan screw and I actually put a bolt through the back of it over there. A nut bolt combo. So that way it's mounted. It's mounted at that angle and it, it supports the GPU directly. So the GPU is actually resting on top of it, if you can see right there. So that gives the extra airflow, and I set the fans back enough to where they don't rub or anything like that for the uh, GPU fan and everything, so. Works good. Hey, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is just something different I want to do on the channel. A little bit of B-roll, some updates for the case, uh, some fan coloring and stuff like that. So I just wanted to show you what I've been doing in my free time. And then uh, we'll show you what the actual PC looks like now because it's changed since I recorded all the video stuff. Uh, I got rid of the Dragon Center and then I used the Mystic Light. So the MSI card flicker or flashes RGB now, but everything else is white. So we'll go ahead and show you that now. This is the final product, final form, Kamehameha.
as you can see from the video that I actually moved the fan that I painted in this video to the rear and then I painted a different one. Uh, so I went for thinner lines just so it got more of a funneling effect, a spiral to the center so that it looked cooler. And I also painted the back of the front case fan so that it has a little spiral on it too. And then I did the lines again on all the other fans. Just looks cool. I just thought it was neat. Uh, it was an easy way to, to color coordinate my case so that I didn't have to like pay for a bunch of different panels or do any acrylic stuff, uh, which I do intend to do. I want to do some cool acrylic stuff across the top of the Noctual cooler. Um, I've been thinking about changing out all of the PC components, you know, overall, but uh, instead of doing all that, I'm just going to customize this the best I can. And then since I bought the top caps, the Chromax caps for the Noctua cooler, they don't work in this case. If I had the D15, it would fit, but the D15S sits too high, so it bumps on the top. So I just can't win sometimes, but... I like the way the case looks. It looks great to me. And then I put all my work into it. So it's customized, you know, a little bit of love. So hope you all enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, you can check out one of these videos, either one of them. I mean, just take your pick. Uh, one's going to be suggested and then one's going to be a pick from, from the channel. So thank you all again for stopping in. Hope everyone's staying safe. Hope you have a great holidays. Peace out. Much love, much respect. I'll catch y'all probably next year sometime. And then we're starting to live stream soon, so I gotta get all the channel stuff. I haven't decided on YouTube or Twitch. But I'm getting to, talking to a lot of good friends, so. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. Ask up. Stay safe.